Well, we will try to do that. We're currently not doing it okay. because we still have a lot of numbers to, to attach values to. But are you asking me how we probably will approach it? On Twitter and Cloud Score. Cloud Score. Cloud Score. Cloud Score. Cloud Score. Yeah. Cloud Score. Yeah, so. It's a gang sign. <laughs> yeah, it, it, will, it will definitely help if, for example, you can find a dollar value. Maybe you can, uh, I don't know, no, attach a promo to one of your uh, tweets, future yes, yeah, yeah. tweets and find out how much, how responsive are your uh, Twitter followers. Like some small, some small amount there. Right? You find you just gauge the their their uh, their responsiveness, and then from there you can project things. You don't have to be very very accurate. Actually, the OKeeper data here is not that accurate. Sometimes we drop off some uh, some purposes. But what is important <coughs> is that you have a trend, like somewhat uh, a narrow values, uh, a narrow range of values where you think customer value is at. And once you're there, it doesn't have to be very specific. Then you have your leverage there. I think Jensen is quite contextual because you don't promote on you don't promote on Facebook and you don't promote on AdWords, right? No. You only promote on Twitter right now. Uh, really Somewhat. Yeah. yeah. Well, if your customer base is primarily on Twitter, then it's a lot, a lot easier because you just make sure that when they sign up or when they purchase your product, you ask them make it a required field that they actually sign in with your Twitter account or get their Twitter handle, and then you have a. A simple division, and you find out your amount of uh, followers per follower, and then with that amount, how much will it take to increase your Twitter followers tenfold? How much will your additional revenue be? Right, right, right. Affiliate program. Oh yeah, and, and you guys are free to ask each other questions too. Yeah. Feel free. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Yeah. Ah. Ladies first. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're a lady, I'm not judging. <laughs> <laughs> The prettier one. Yeah. As or as? As. as uh, yeah. yeah. Did yeah. you say as or you mentioned that you were going to Europe. Yeah. Uh, do you still teach when you're in Europe? Does it all happen online? Um, the, for the private teaching here, um, probably going to stop for that one month when I'm away. Uh, but we're... We, well, it's, it's, uh, the singer I'm working with is from California, and she started a Kickstarter kind of pro, um, thing. Uh, and I'm not sure of how many people signed up, but I might be teaching some students while I'm there on tour if they're in Europe as well. And probably when I come back, there will be some might be some Skype students from that. Uh, but when I'm there, probably not. But I am trying to get uh, trying to secure a workshop or a performance in Berlin because I'm going uh, five days in Spain. Uh, Spain, Holland, Belgium, Amsterdam, Germany. That's the week, a week and a half with the U.S. singer, and then I'm extending my trip to Manchester and Manchester, Blackburn, trying to secure a show in Blackburn, and one week in Berlin. I was just wondering because you travel all over, and I was wondering yeah. how that schedule. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I mean, my most of, most of my private students know I'm going to be away for that month. So some of my students, I have some students who are studying in music college here in ICOM and in Aswara. And uh, it's, right now is their uh, semester break, so some of them are taking two hour lessons uh, before, like two hours less, instead of once a week, one, one hour a week is like two hours uh, a week. It's a shame that you're not <coughs> dropping by Iceland because you might be able to like cross the uh, I know, right? Yeah. 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 I'll, 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 I'll take the, the end of transport. Yeah, call them out and say, like, if you need money, I can bask with you. Do <laughs> <laughs> some music. Get uh, yeah. some inspiration, maybe. <laughs> Or maybe you can hook up the like the try shot thing on the back just in there. I know right. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely sweet. Yeah. Do for that video for yes, I know right. That's real. Uh, so I want to ask a question. Right. So the first question is like how many samples are required before I can decide on each micro conversion? How many oh, the sample samples? Size. Yeah, the you size. you better ask a statistician. I'm not a statistician. It's just that because of the, the volume that we're dealing with because we deal with like hundreds of thousands of leads per day so I mean we even you don't have to ask the <coughs> that's already a, a normal I'm sorry a representative sample of the, the leads mm -hmm. but what 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 uh, what number are you talking about yeah, I mean like I mean like for startups I mean like the number grow very slowly I mean like maybe I reach a single sales 
from the, uh, from stats 101, if I remember correctly, we used to put n equals 30 or 31 or something of the population. It's a representative sample size. I don't know if that's that applies to other than a normal curve or something, but maybe 30. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, better I, as a test. I think also very interesting. This is this one of the things like like. Uh, when do you need to start looking at your numbers? Yeah, you yeah. know, uh, as a startup, you, start you, you start with single digit sales, <laughs> then double digit sales, then triple digit sales. When, when is the cutoff point uh, before you say start, start analyzing it there? My, my personal take on this is that if you can start early, you can get the hang of it to handle your data. Yeah. And then as you get really, really big and you hire a business yeah. intelligence guy, then the business intelligence guy can't fool you. Yeah. Because you, know, you you understand the at least the basic logic. The thing most important is to track your data. Yeah, most important is to start getting the habit. Yeah. Even from Just the very first it. one, the very first customer yeah. you already Just put in. Yeah. That's yeah. your that's your template already. Because when you work with smaller number, the math is easier. So then as you scale and grow, you you cut you, you kind of develop an intuition that oh, mm -hmm. I have to be the business. Yeah, you have to be the one. You you're <laughs> most interested in the impact on the bottom line, right? Yes, that's right. So it's more it, for us we. Because uh, this this model actually very much incomplete because we don't even tie in costs here, which uh, they're doing it manually. The automated one is just revenue. But so for this one, it's what impacts revenue, and what impacts revenue, the most actionable one, the the litmus test there is that will it affect that revenue or that that bottom line? And for this, the value per customer affects the revenue because if you modify it, will it change uh, the revenue? The, uh, as a direct result. Because if you are a few steps away from it, like page views for example, that's not very that's not a very good measure. Because you can increase the page views but your multiplier is very low such that it's negligible, then that's not something that you should take action on. Maybe you should work more on maybe increasing your price because that will probably increase more uh, revenue. Okay, apart from price wise on page let's say design wise picking does it help something? Yes, we do a lot of A-B testing in, uh, in Mindvalley. Uh, there is a whole team dedicated to split testing every single headline, graphic, and those Hello, things. Buttons, you can, you can find everything, you can find our results in mindvalleyinsights.com. We are open sourcing our, our methodology, our results. Which kinds of headlines sell, which kinds of customer support strategies sell. And because even our customer support uh, support agents, they actually upsell our products as well. So those things we have a very very rigid approach to finding out which particular which particular methodology will give the increase in our bottom line. But yeah, so what is actionable versus non actionable? If you can measure it and it affects something, that's probably actionable. And then of course it's up to the business. A person to think to, to, to assign priorities on that one is is a 20% boost in uh, in sales equivalent to 40% uh, boost in revenue for example I don't know. Questions? Anyone? I got one because the hardest. So you said that you were you were animation yeah. lecturer then you then you realized that it's not going anywhere and you basically freed yourself from the red race, freed yourself from stuff. So I'm curious so in, in your travels of the most remote places, one of, I mean some of the most remote places in the world, in China anyway, um, and, and, and in the context of webcam where here are a whole bunch of people who are basically nose deep in, 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 in suburbia, you know, digging into technology and business and stuff and so on and so forth. What are your insights in terms of like, you know, like, like my important question is like, how, how's the cell, cell coverage there? <laughs> how, how, how do you stay? I mean, does it, did it bother you that you? I mean, obviously you said that it didn't bother you that you, that you were not in touch with the world. So, but what, what are your what, what are your experiences in terms of like when you go there and you see the use or lack thereof of technology? Like obviously it's a much more simplification sort of thing. But do you see any like you know tech being used in ways that just surprise you, or there were moments where you know like for example. Dying in the desert, no water and stuff. Did, did it ever occur you, to you like, if I had four square checked in? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm, I'm just curious to find out what, 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 what are your ins, I mean, what, what are your right now your insights in terms of technology and, and sort of like everybody's quest towards you know, water, 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 and, and in that side of the world, which happens to be what 90% of the world is like that. Uh, I mean, it feels like that 90% of the world is like that. 
Okay, surprising China, I think, is really advanced. Um, a few days after I cycled, I met this uh, student, university student from somewhere. And he helped me out in many things. He helped me to buy this modem. This China... Made in China. Huawei. Yeah, something like that, yeah. This wireless modem. Yeah. And surprisingly, it works everywhere. Even in Tibet. Yes, Jeez. even in Tibet. And imagine I was I was in the desert. I was camping at night, and I can still FaceTime down, down, down movies. <laughs> <laughs>
just eat uh, potato. Um, I just bought it for all. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And sneakers, you know, easy things. So the next time you leave, start off saying, oh, I need $2 million for 20% equity. <laughs> 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 Starting a branch out and club, K L O U T, and how they uh, grow uh, without headset, so this thing, that work, the elderly way of grow. Okay, uh, they they rely on uh, your friends' lease, right? In case of that, is that am I correct? Uh, yeah. Okay, how how does it go about? Because like, basically, let's say somebody invite me to branch out, then branch out attack my network, right? Is it? I've gone through the Facebook API, Open Graph, there's no direct method to it. Is that as something that we do outside? Outside Facebook or...? You want to you wanna access the person's friends, is it? Something at Branch Out, that's how Branch Out did it, I noticed that. Um, uh, how I complex is it to do something like that? No, no, it's, it's usually, it's like you can access to your friend list, it's like a usually, it's like a, let's say in Branch, it's like a, I'm, if I'm not mistaken for Branch Out, it's that, you, if like if you it's like you will go through a friend list, it's like do you want to invite them to yeah. branch out? It's like once it's like they accept that you invite, it's like your web app just keeps track of. It's a shadow network. network. From what yeah. I understand it, I'm not very clear, but I believe that it's a shadow network. Basically, clout and uh, yeah. branch out yeah. keeps a shadow network. So yeah. whoever, if your friends are already on clout or or oh, branch so out, no, no, it's no, not no. From there's no way there's no way Facebook will let you. Let's say for yeah. example, if you if you approve an app. That app cannot access any of your friends' information, only yours. Uh, no, actually, they, they you can. You, you, you can ask for permission to access to your friends' the, uh, information, but uh, oh, that come, but that comes with the fact that uh, if user sees that you request for too many information, they were just like, uh, "Do I want to approve that? Uh, maybe not." No, no. I, I noticed that they won't ask a friend until later. They tell yeah. they, they have certain code. You have different kind of network. And then there's a big button there for you to press invite you to Yeah, yeah, so it's like, that's what usually is like, uh, you just ask it when, when you require kind of thing. Like so it's not a shadow network thing? Right? I think they still do shadow network. I, I think what happens is that because they recently changed the privacy setting, so I can I think apps can still access your friend's public stuff. Okay, yeah. But your friend's more private stuff, it, it's, they still aggregate a shadow network just because yeah. it's, it's, it's simple to do and you, you, you Yeah, all I did is the email and then you don't send an email. Yeah. So, uh, essentially, it's like that's that's why it's like if you don't want to, it's like if you don't want to ask, it's like uh, have Facebook ask, it's like asking too much for Facebook permissions. It's like the best way is that you maintain. It's like you just get the basic information and you maintain. But it's like you just ask the users to key in whatever other information that is left. I think that's one of the uh, common uh, strategies that's being used on dating dating apps, uh, Facebook apps. It's like yeah. they they just they just ask you for the name. It's like they'll populate you the names and everything but it's like the details is like uh, what's your preferences and everything what's your hair color and everything you will still have to fill it up and you will be associated to your profile it's like within your app itself okay so it's just it's like you, you, you know that this is the facebook profile you just need to access it you just need to add your web address need to attach no, the i just want to access the, the target person with accepted uh, the network you know something that branch out i want to replicate the branch out method uh, and I've been studying ways to do it. I mean, just want to know, right? It's very hard to find. No, it's not that complex. Uh, but if you're talking, you're talking about shadow networks, like, well, that's another thing I hate it really. Uh, the as, as, as it is, I guess it depends on whether do you want to ask for permissions about their professional profiles. But that also is like because some people are not that comfortable in putting like professional profiles in there, so you may want to have like a. Uh, yeah, you. Your, it's like you, you have your sort of like a shadow data that goes with it. Yeah. Yeah. Is like, you want more private information, just, just invite them over yeah. and react to you. I've got a question for S. So, have you taught any virtual lessons? Like uh, Google Hangout or live or anything? Just Skype okay. lessons. Skype lessons. How, how, how was it? Yeah. Um, how, how's the experience been? I had a student in California and a student in Oregon. It was, it was really cool. I mean, the, the only difficulty about teaching via Skype is if you're a complete beginner, I can't fix your posture because it's uh, the video. But like stuff like composition or teaching um, improvisation and stuff like that. Everything else that doesn't require physical corrections, yeah. Um, yeah, that's the, the tricky part. I mean, you can show close-ups on the camera, like different things on the posture. Uh, that's the best you can do. So you um, can. Yeah. Um, and and Zaharis, did you did you could could you get Skype? 
in, 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 in China. Uh, I guess the bandwidth is not, 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 I, 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 I didn't have Skype. So we won't be able to, we won't be able to Skype you in uh, when you're in Iceland. Uh, this time, yeah, it's maybe. Maybe, yeah. Whenever I, I get to the town, then yeah. Let's try to do a whole cup because we've got several events and then we'll see whether we can. Uh, oh, yeah. Live, live, live stream you here and then we'll get to I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. I'll try. All right, one last question before we call it the night. Yes. Uh, for Dario. Okay. Um, are you married? <laughs> and you <laughs> have a family and wife and family. And you just, don't you miss them when you travel for six months? Or um, one year? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I, I the thing is, I <laughs> all right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, well, another reason why I came back here last year because I I found my wife there. I'm married to a Kyrgyz woman, and that's the reason why I came back here because I need to work for a while because I need money to get married, and that's why I'm still here. And, <laughs> Um, okay, so the thing is, uh, for this journey, actually, we supposed. Okay, actually, I want uh, the next, the next one. Actually, I plan to write uh, in South America. Actually, I want, I wanted to write from the Equator, from Quito in Ecuador, all the way down to Cheyenne, Argentina. That's the plan. But then um, I start to think. Okay, now I want to write with my wife. <laughs> so we want to have a long honeymoon, basically. So that's why we want to do like a, an e easy one first. So that's why we want to do Europe. And um, basically, my wife she just got pregnant, and we just know about it, and it got complicated. A man that I do, a man that I do, right? Yeah. So and I I already planned this, so I have to go. So um, we 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 we're gonna be uh, contacting each other on Skype, email, and everything. Oh, you can convert your money into like a private <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the thing is, it's kind of dangerous. Yeah, actually, we're supposed to do it together. Yeah. And that's it. Please give a round of applause for our panel.